Welcome to Next to Madison, a podcast to help you live your best life. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Next to Madison. On today's episode, we are sitting down with an expat, uh, short for expatriate. A lot of us uh, with the whole remote work from home have uh, contemplated leaving the country with everything going on and maybe exploring some sunnier, some different places. So I'm actually sitting down with somebody who left the country uh, a few years back, and he's going to tell us all about the expat lifestyle. And if you're listening to this on audio, definitely go to our YouTube channel because he is in his backyard and you can see he lives in a beautiful jungle in Thailand. So with that being said, let's bring on Justin Ross Lee back in action again, almost two years later. Madison, it's so great to be back with you. Has it been two years? Time doesn't uh, really work the same way July. here. Two years in July. Unbelievable. Remember when How are I, you? I go, I'm good. I remember when you came to the studio, obviously mm. pre-COVID, and then I saw mm. you out in the Hamptons at some like swingers party. Probably. Who, who was that guy that owned that big mansion? Like the weird sex guy? He inherited all the money. He was a Holocaust survivor. Or his dad was. Let's be clear. I've never met. <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein, I've never been to his island, okay? I've never been on that fucking plane. Come on. Do you know what it hit that guy with that big mansion? You know who I'm talking oh, about? Ma oh, oh, Madison, that uh, that 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 uh, Jewish guy with all the money in the Hamptons. Yeah, I mean, please. <laughs> throw, why, don't, why don't you throw a dart? It's called Wall Street. You used to work for those criminals. Exactly, right? So, yeah, so speaking of Wall Street, though, what did you think of sure, the whole it was, it was, by the way, it was Sir Ivan's castle, Sir yep. Ivan's mansion. It's ca his castle. Yeah. No, I did. I didn't stay. I didn't stay late enough for the swinging part. Okay, you know, um, it, <laughs> it was a it was a family trip. I came to see my family. Yeah, exactly. Wait, so so speaking of Wall Street, what did you think about that whole GameStop thing? I thought it was awesome. I, I love it. I love it. It was, um, it, it it was it was social activism at its finest. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, look, the banks can't always win. They're in the risk business, right? They're risking, they're risking providing you X for, for, for Y and Z. And, and sometimes they lose. Sometimes they fail. Banks can't always win. Casinos always win unless you're Donald Trump. But we can talk about that later. I don't know how much time, how much, how much tape you got in this machine. Oh, plenty if it's interesting, right? Wait, so l let's talk about the expat stuff. So when did you leave sure. America? Because you grew up in a yuppie town in Westchester, New York. And you, and then you lived the, the, the high life in Manhattan. Everybody knew you. You were going to all these parties. You were bumping elbows with celebrities. You were I had a nice ride. Yeah. I had a really good, I had a really nice ride. After grad school, moved to, moved to Manhattan. Uh, I have been a recovering New Yorker for the past five years um, here on Samui, on Koh Samui, and we're, uh, we're a, a small speck of sand in the Gulf of Thailand. Um, island's about three times the size of Manhattan, and this is the balcony off of uh, my bedroom. So I wake up, good morning, it's and awesome. just, just to this, and it's not even a particularly clear morning, it, but it, it's just, it's, it's spectacular. So I uh, broke a lease in Manhattan and I said, fuck it, not Phuket, fuck it. And, um, and this has been my home ever since. And uh, I've got a shiks of girlfriends and, and, and two dogs and great community on the island. And there's literally never been a better time in the history of tourism and the history of, of, of living on this island since it's been inhabited. It's not a... It's, it, it's, it's not a place where people lived 50 or 40 or 30 years ago. There was nothing here. So there's never been a better time to be here. So what was the decision that made you leave America? I was miserable. I was miserable. And I could not. Look, you know, you get it. You're a New Yorker. You've walked around. Everyone, it, it, it's not that, it, it, it's collective misery. It's accepted misery, right? It's, it's, it's the constant struggle. And, uh, you know, I, I feel horrible. My heart goes out to anybody that's been stuck in these, in these glorified walk-in closets during COVID. It would have been too much. And at that point, it was too late for anybody to move or do anything. 
I just was tired of, um, I was, I was tired of being a schmuck. And I think, I think whenever you're, you're, you're hustled by the notion of Americana, right. By the notion of you can live wherever you want uh, to live in America. Right. Cause otherwise shit gets complicated. Yeah. Oh, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Do you, you want to go to Florida? You want to move out? You, you, you really want to test your luck. You want to move out to Hollywood. You want to go be a, be a VIP agent, uh, club, you know, work at Hakkasan in Vegas. Remember when that was an occupation? Now all these guys are fucking real estate brokers. I, that is true. Now they're all real estate brokers. But there's, but there's, not, a lot, there's not enough life vests to go around. So what, what are we doing? So look, I've always, I, you know, I, I, I wrote a book about, um, I wrote a book when I was still living in the States, uh, living in New York City, about going against the grain and kind of um, circumventing the circumcision, whatever you want to call it, the norm, whatever, <laughs> right? And I'm like, what am I doing? I'm trying to replicate a life that I'm doing in the wrong, uh, that I want to lead, right? Of, of, of waking up to beautiful vacation at the end of the vacation remember you ever go on a holiday trip you're uh, you've never been out here Deja. have you medicine no i haven't been to thailand no. okay so but you go down to the caribbean you get, your last day you're there five six seven days on your seventh day you wake up you're like oh i gotta go i gotta go home tomorrow why are we doing that just reverse engineer your life we're doing this by zoom i'd be you know if but not for 2020 2021 maybe i'd be in new york i would come into the studio uh you know i would have seen you in person this is it i hate there's nothing i hate more than the term new normal but there's physically no reason to have to come in to have dialogue anymore and uh you know unfortunately it took it took a million people to die in yeah. order to figure that out it's a disgusting thing but you know we've made huge strides there's no reason why people should be living in the country where their passport says on the, on the cover of their passport just because that's their country i don't know maybe maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm weird maybe i'm not a patriot maybe i'm not drinking the same kool-aid maybe you know well I, th I think people probably just stay in their country primarily because that's where their family is and yeah i mean that's crazy i you know look <laughs> i moved as far the fuck away as possible just i yeah I grew up in a Jewish household. Whatever I could do so that my father, it was too far away for him to board a plane to adjust my thermostat. Yeah. I had to move to a literal jungle in order for that to, to, to happen. I don't want him fucking with the thermostat. And yes, <laughs> he'll, no, he'll tell the doorman, he'll, 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 break into my, he'll break into my building just to make sure I'm uncomfortable. So now I keep the thermostat on 16. Oh yeah, by the way, when you live in another country, you live in Asia. I'm not on. I'm not on Fahrenheit anymore. I'm on centigrade. I'm not on miles an hour. I'm on kilometers. I'm, I I think in this shit. I think. Wow. I, and, and and by the way, the whole reason you know, Madison, Madison and I had a lot of time uh, trouble setting this up. I think I, you know I I I, I might have uh, fucked you over on the schedule two or three times. But that's that's kind of the Thai way, you know. Look, you wanted an island interview. This is an island interview, and also. We don't participate in this daylight savings time bullshit. Yeah. Come on, exactly. you want to talk about scams? What is that? Yeah, I was like, are you 13 hours? Are you 12 hours? Are you 11 hours? He's like, you're in New York. I'm like, no, I'm sitting in Denver right now. Oh, shit. Now we got to go back. And I'm like, let's just stick to Eastern time to try to get this day figured out. And, and I'll, and, I'll subtract two. <laughs> and this, and, no, and exactly. And the scary thing is I, I've got an, I, I swear I have an MBA in finance, but I can't fucking count backwards from 12. So. Is that right? Yeah, so can't, cannot. So what are what are some of the uh, the let's talk about the good things about living uh, sure. in the country like things that you really love? Yeah, I get to wake up to this. Well, yeah, I get to wake up to birds chirping and wild animals fucking, and <laughs> it's it's no, it's 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 really incredible. And and if you see, that's my favorite tree over there. And just like coconut, just the coconuts fall. Oh. Hopefully not on your head. And by the way, that's actually. It's always been like a running joke of my friends. Oh, well, Justin, how are, has a coconut fall on your head? That shit happens. And I could just see the New York Post obituary. Like, like, I, like <laughs> that's, that's my biggest, you know, you can tell a lot by a person of, of uh, how would you want to die? Well, I'd want to, you know, I, I don't want to die drowning. 
I, I don't want to, I, I, maybe, maybe in an airplane, because at least, you know, maybe there's a story attached to it, and that's kind of cool. I, I loving what I do. I love, I love to fly. Yeah, I'd love to fly laying down on it. I'd like to die laying down on an airplane. But I'm really actually, and, and, and this, uh, you know, you know, the New Yorker comes back here and he to, uh, moves to, uh, comes, moves to, to jungle, and he's freaking out, like, because he's going to uh, be hit in the head and die by coconut. Yeah. Has that's that my, that's actually my biggest fear. And our roads are not safe here. And people ride around, they're 11 years old, there's four kids, or at nine years old, there's four kids riding on a motorcycle, a motor, a motorbike, no helmet, projectile baby in front. Oh, it's unbelievable, the roads here. So it's do unbelievable. You, do you drive a regular car or a moped? A regular car? No, no, our cars have three wheels. <laughs> <laughs> what am I fucking? What am I fucking Gilligan here? Yes, no, I, I I I drive a regular a regular car, but the steering wheels the steering wheel is on the right side, right? The right, yeah. And so it's, and it been now because COVID, I haven't been back. I've been yeah, I've been been back to New York. Uh, I haven't driven a car with the steering wheel on the other side in a long, long time, like in in what what almost a year and a half, and it fucks with you, like. The windshield wiper is now the directional, and the directional <laughs> signal is now the windshield. Like, there's, there, there's, there's no hope. There's no hope. The only, the only hope I have is a Thai driver's license and maybe a little bit of mercy from the East Hampton Town Police. Yeah. Maybe. May, may, maybe. Oh, okay, 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 coconut boy. Okay, go, yeah, sure, sure. Did you miss the Hamptons this summer? You couldn't no, I did not. I don't think, I did <laughs> not, I don't think anybody did. You know, it, it, it's crazy. There's never been a, a crazier time for like, just like class warfare. The people that can afford to get out the Hamptons have gone and everyone else is just like miserable in their part. Madison, I heard like like 60 to 75% of, of just like apartments in New York City are, are vacant. Tell me how that's sustainable. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense to me. It does. doesn't. People, I, aren't, people aren't sleeping in their apartments. Yeah, and I think that, you know, some people are under this, conclusion that you know once everything opens up it's like you'll flip a light switch and everything will come back and i'm like no, no you haven't even seen the effects no that. no absolutely there's going to be so much latency and um and it's going to take a while in order for us to see the true effects because there is no appeal to live look I, I, i'm again recovering new yorker i love new york okay everyone i'm a i'm associated among the expat scene i want to get back into that because you and I, I can pontificate forever. You're a great interview. But look, the longer I'm, uh, you know, so I'm synonymous on the island with, with New York, which is something, it's a compliment. It's an absolute compliment. But what is the point in paying a lot for very little if there's no restaurants, if there's no shopping? If last time I was in New York, uh, wow, about 13 months ago, like, I'm on Madison Avenue. There's there, there's a homeless tent outside of uh, of Hermes and Louis Vuitton. People just camping out there, like homeless people outside of some of the most expensive real estate in the world. And it blew my mind because and that was pre-pandemic. That was pre-pandemic. That was that was that was that was before that was before millions and millions of people lost their job. So it's just a different notion of like community i guess right because i'm always going to be an outsider here when you're not a, the word for gringo the word for like it, it translates to other it tra literally translates to not us it's called phalang i'll always be a phalang i'll never be a thai person but thai and, and that's okay and you know it's it's not that derogatory um you know provided you own it and you speak a little thai like i do and, <laughs> and you can talk yeah, you have to. Living here, you have to. There are people that have been living on this island 15 years don't speak a lick of Thai. You have to. It's a fun language, too, because it's very animated. You almost have to sound like you're making fun of them. You have to be animated. Otherwise, they don't, because it's tonal, right? So you have to, you know, and the difference between, between ma is, is uh, ma and ma are two different words. And I've had trouble with my tone. Every little iteration, and I've, I've been having trouble as a New Yorker, recovering New Yorker my entire life with tone. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, to, just, to, just like at, at Starbucks. But it's, um, it is, uh, it's, er, it's, it's still early here. What the fuck are we talking about? We're all over We're the place. Come on. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is your interview. Can you draw a line in the sand? Literally, figuratively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, so those are, so obviously like, 
you had made this choice pre-COVID. This wasn't. Okay. Oh, oh well, why am I here? I'm yes. going. Yes. Yeah. No, re right. Okay. Yes. Let's get back. Let's back here. Re-engineer your life. If it's not working, do something different. The definition of insanity. Same thing over and over again, expecting different results. So what I would do is on the last day, here we are, on the last day of anyone's great vacation. Oh, I got to go to work tomorrow. I got to do this. No, you don't, because maybe some of those beautiful places on earth, you, you don't, you don't, have, it's not $6,000 a month for a one bedroom apartment that wouldn't qualify for one bedroom anywhere else. Yeah. There's no... There's no tipping your doorman on Christmas more than, than people make in a year here. It's, the whole thing's fucking backwards. So now let's, let's realign our values. Let's realign our assumption. Like family is great, but honestly, um, and, and that, that's tough. My parents are, you know, they're not, they're not young Jews, so it only gets worse from here. Right. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're in their, they're in their, they're in their seventies. And I get it. Look, you know, the Jewish holidays coming up. I get, I get all the shit. I get, I, you moved, you moved, you abandoned me. I said, mom, I, you know, I, I didn't leave you wrapped in a blanket at the firehouse. I did not abandon you. I just, I used the passport, uh, you know, that I was, that, that I was, uh, that I'm thankful enough to have. The one thing I'm proud of, uh, you know, is, is having a valid passport. How are you going to use it? How do you re-engineer your life to make yourself happy? And if you're not happy in New York, and one of these people is absolutely miserable, and you know, why do you think there's Dwayne Reed and CVS on every fucking corner? We're medicated, we're medicated, right? Yeah. We're med, and you don't look like you're in New York right now. Where are you in Colorado? I'm in Colorado right now, yeah. Okay, so we're medicated to believe that we're happy, and it's just not. It's it's not a serene environment. I mean, we what yeah. do we do? We put all of our nature in, in, in one sense. We put all of our nature in one little place. Oh, you want to go there? Nah, it's too far a schlep. No, every time I leave the apartment, it's $250. I don't know where it goes. Yeah, that is true, right? You cannot leave your, your house without spending money. No, no. And I wake up and there's this far, and the people here are incredible. And there's, again, we were going back to, the, you know, the homeless guy camping out in front of Hermes. There, there aren't really homeless people here because you just live off the land if you're very poor. Other Thai people, there's a sense of community. They will take care of you. They'll build a little tin roof for you. And you, you, you're just on a coconut diet. And the coconut farmers that, that pull coconuts right off this tree here. Yeah. I, I've had the freshest. I don't know how to open it. I'll, I'll lose, please. You know, I, I'll, I'll lose a finger, an arm, a wrist. <laughs> but they'll come over and they take the machete and they whack, whack, whack. And I'm drinking coconuts right off the tree. They fall. Please. Oh. They said, what? I said, what do I owe you? He's like, it's your coconut tree. What do you owe me? I'm like, yeah, I don't know how to take it off the tree. Yeah, right. I'm just afraid it's gonna, I'm just afraid it's gonna hit me in the head. Okay, so let's get back to- What are the challenges when, if somebody decides, okay, I wanna move to another country, it's not that simple as booking no. a flight and getting an no. apartment. The first thing you have to do is break up with your family. So it's, it's kind of like, a, it's, a re, it's a reverse intervention, right? Okay, See, <laughs> that, that mom, makes sense. Mom, dad. You know, boss, whoever, whoever, whoever it is. Look, I've been think, I've been thinking about this whole citizenship thing. I've been thinking about this whole, you know, waking up and coming to work and kind of this whole time zone shit, and it's just not working out. No, I look, I, I think it's the biggest gamble you can take emotionally, right? Because it's a big explanation. It took me a, a half decade of living here before you know uh b before i i could eventually stop answering the stupidest question the one i get all the time is so when are you coming home like i i pay thai taxes we've got two dogs uh i'm emotionally attached to a fantastic canadian woman here yeah right and like this is home right this is this is it this is it and yeah. and pe people have difficulty. They think this is some kind of, ri ri you know, uh, ritual or religious retreat or some shit. This is not. This is it. This is it. What what am I looking for? I found it. Yeah. I found it. It's amazing. Okay, so you break up with your family. Then what do you do? Can't you? Just and, by, and by and by and by the way, break up with the family. You know, look, ten years ago, fine. Before we had fiber optic. That you're really breaking up with these families. This is not breaking up. This is this is okay. 
fine. You know, I, I said, I said, don't worry, my mother says, oh, you did see me in a year and a half. I said, mom, I'm so sorry about COVID. I know, I know it's all my fault. It's all my fault. I apologize. I, I, I tried the bat soup, delicious. <laughs> I would rather, here's the other thing. She says, well, you're too, you, I said, would you like me to see you more? She says, well, it would be nice. I haven't seen you. I said, I would love to come visit you as, as, as often as you can stomach me. Don't you love how this has become Freudian about my relationship with my mother? This is perfect. I love it. Perfect. Typical Jewish. Okay. But yeah, so, 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 so Jewish. I said, look, you know, if I, live, if I lived in LA, I'd have to schlep to come see you. Well, that's a shorter flight. You could come see me more often in LA. I'm like, let me tell you something. I once flew, mom. Be, I, I once, once flew between New York and LA via Tokyo. I have no, if, if it's another 15 hours, or another 10 hours on a plane, I don't mind. I'll do that. That's on me. Yeah. So long as the world reopens. When the world reopens, I can't wait to, uh, to be hitting the skies as often as possible. But I need to always remember this is my home base. This is my community. There's yeah. a huge ex, and I want to get into the expat community and what it takes That's to be an expat. But to answer your, your question, citizenship, immigration, these are the struggles, right? Breaking up with your family. Yep. Being having uh, a, a, a legal remedy to live here, immigration. It's not free, it's not easy, it's another fucking language. It is a pain in the ass in Thailand, other countries, Indonesia is easier. But I don't want to live in Indonesia. I, I want to live in Koh Samui. We have no, we have no earthquakes. We have not, no tsunamis. Wow. We have, we, 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 the, only, the only thing we deal with is a little bit of flooding. And they, they put drainage on the island now. Now there's, uh, now there's a system. So it's, it's, it's better. You know, um, it, it's, it's, really, it's really the perfect place to call home. We used to have international flights. That was a big deal for me. Yeah. Wait, so what are the On the island. What are the taxes like there? compared to taxes in the States, they're great. Yeah. You have to, you know, we have a Thai, a Thai business and uh, we employ, employ uh, Thai people. It's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's a hassle. It's more that the rules change all. I can't get in a little too much because remember, you're, you know, we're, we're Zooming from a place where, uh, where there's freedom of speech but I have freedom of life here, right? And there's something called the Lest Majeste laws where you're not allowed to say anything bad about the Thai government, but I have nothing to say about the Thai government. We've had bad to say about the Thai government. Wait, we've, had really? less, we've had less than 10 COVID deaths. I love the king. And, okay. the best part of, and the best part about the king, and I love our king, is that he calls himself a king. Yeah. <laughs> there's hey, truth in I advertising. Because it's, it's the oldest monarchy to ever, we've never been occupied by any. Samui, Thailand's never been occupied by any by anybody except you know for a jungle Jew from New York. So wait, what's the punishment if you talk negatively about the Thai government? Fifteen years in prison. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? So you can't say anything like negative. Could you imagine if that happened? Can you can you see me? Can you see me wink? Oh yeah. No, I'm, I mean, well, well, well by the way, it, does, it does. It, I'll tell you what. It does happen in America. Look what happened to Kathy Griffin. You might not agree with her. You ever meet Kathy? I haven't, no. I like her, though. Okay. I like her. She's, she's edgy, right? She's, she's, Madison, I have a lot of respect for you as a comic. Female comic's not easy. You know, I remember when she told me, like, look, I can't go on, stare, I can't go on stage if my hair's too pretty because then, then they don't even listen to the... It's not easy being wasn't my a hair female comic. Pretty. It's whatever. Pretty. With too much makeup. Like, oh, if I, if I shower before a set, no one's going to take me seriously. I'm like, I'm like, during COVID, they spread it out. What's that? I'm going to have my tits showing. Oh, your tits showing. Well, I mean, you know, if you want to increase ticket sales, really, it's not, after COVID, it's not a, this is, this is a, what do you call it? A stimulus? A stimulus. Yeah, right, maybe, exactly. Maybe you should, you should stimulate a little more. Yeah. So look. <laughs> so wait, I, you, you know, never uh, answered the question. What is the tax? Of course not. Is it 50%? What are the tax? No, no, no. Uh, so, so uh, above a certain amount uh, of U.S. income, it's it's uh, it's covered. Uh, but look, uh, the tax taxes are great. So there's two taxes, right? Right. You pay you pay your income tax or whatever you, you report. You earn back home. That's that's great. And then you employ Thai people. So Candace and I employ Thai people, and you know through through our company, Candace owns a hair salon on the island, and so you pay their social security. Living here is not free. 
right. but you cannot, but you cannot afford not to live here once you have, have the quality of life. Yeah, it's right. un, it's great. It's unbelievable. And so I don't understand why pe more people don't reverse engineer their lives. And if there's ever been a catalyst to do so, it's, it's yeah. Zoom. It's COVID. Yeah. And I think the the reason it hasn't been a mass exodus is because our borders have been closed for 13 months now. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I was, I was in China, I was transiting I was in Hong Kong for a day or two. And like, everyone's still like, oh, it's a flu or everyone's joking. And it was a big joke. I'm like, you guys better prepare. Like, th like this is happening and everyone else is taking it seriously. And everyone in America was very laissez-faire. And even a year, even a year plus later, have you seen photos of, of South Beach? Oh my God, it's it's a fucking petri I've dish been down there. there. <laughs> you know what? I yeah, I know. I'm sorry, you're part of the problem. Where where were you during the insurrection? Where were you during the insurrection? The insurrection. I was in Denver. Um, okay, okay. You were you were you weren't at 1600 Pennsylvania. Oh, no. You weren't at the Capitol building. Perfect. Okay, good. You weren't in DC. Yeah, no, I was in the mountains. But here's the thing, I went to co I went to Florida twice to do shows because you could perform in indoors, full audiences. And I had such a great time and such a successful trip. And they pay really well down there that I said, really? I'm doing a second trip. So I go to do a second trip. The first four days, I'm going to stay with a family friend. And nice. son of a bitch, my friend I was staying with who ran COVID. around saying COVID's a hoax, got COVID, gave my ass COVID. And the rest so of So you had COVID. <laughs> how's, how's your taste? Uh, fine. Everything's fine. You I haven't was, lost your taste? I was just tired. That's it. I got really lucky. I was just tired. And I lost five pounds in three days. It was amazing. <laughs> Isn't that great? Oh, please. You should try you should try the food poisoning here. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's great. You know, um it's better. I was like, ah, but I fared very well. I could see how this could knock somebody out who did not have a good immune system. But for me, I'm like, I'd take annual COVID just for the weight loss. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, look, um, and, and I don't want to get into this because it's, it's such a thing on the island because, you know, we have a lot of interesting people here and, and they're, 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 they're holistic and a lot of people still think it's a hoax because on Samui in Thailand, it is a hoax because there's literally no COVID here. Yeah. As far great. as we know, there's no one's tested positive for COVID on Samui. There's been no local infections here. Bangkok's a different story. And uh, so I guess if you've been stuck in an island watching out for coconuts hitting your head, it is to certain people that are not cued into the news. Like I'm very much aware of what's happening all the time back home. Like just because I moved here doesn't mean I'm disconnected. So I get these, you know, my, I, get the, I get these monthly care packages, you know, from, uh, from the Jewish mother. And, you know, there's a box of Triscuits in there. You can't get Triscuits, you know, the whole thing. And she's sending me clips of the New York Times, like from an article, I'm like, you know, the post office is all fucked up in America. I'm like, so you sent me a three week old article in the New York Times. Yeah, no, like, like the situation has changed. You want me to send you what's going on with the Rahindra? I mean, it, look, it's just, I'm very cued in. I'm very, um, and most people are not on this island about what's going on in America. And I'm very concerned because it's my citizenship. I still don't want to live there, but I'm like cued into the news. I'm dialed in, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm, Jesus Christ, Madison, you, you really could not pay me to move back to America. You just couldn't. I can renew my passport here in Bangkok. I'll come back all the time, but I'll never move back. I just won't. Well, I think a lot of, I think a lot more people are feeling that way now, just with the way the country's kind of going. It's, it's, it's like, everything seems to be falling apart and there's so much censorship and it's like, okay, where can I go to have a better quality of life? I mean, New Yorkers are right. flooding to Florida, but maybe it's quality life. the country. Maybe if it's like, okay, I don't like Joe Biden or I don't like Donald Trump. Right. Then leave. No, right. No, keeping you here. Exactly. And I promise, I promise you come to Thailand, you'll love the monarchy, you'll love the king, not just because it's illegal not to, but that's a really good reason. It's a really good reason. But no, I, I, honestly, honestly, I have so much respect for 
um, the way the Thai government has handled COVID. I love Thai people. I love the culture. I love you walk, you walk into a store, you take your shoes off. And, you know, I, 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 my taste buds have changed. If I come back to America and I order something spicy, I don't even taste it. I don't even, everything you acclimate, of course. Yeah. I eat, I eat like Thai people now. We go into a restaurant. Do you want, you want, you want spicy? You want Thai spice? I'm like, I want, I want what you eat. We're, we're, we're the same now. Yeah. We're not the same. We are not the same. But you know, it's, it's, it's fun to pretend. Well, that's great that you've adjusted to their lifestyle because a lot of people come to America and then they, they, they don't. And they don't. You have to adjust to the lifestyle. You have to. You have to. You you have to. Do you know, know what would happen? Do you know what happened to me at a stop sign if I honked at somebody here? Okay, I can't. You can't just go honking at people, and when you're driving at a, it's not New York. You have to make. You have to. You have to work for Samui versus Samui working for you. You have to work. You have to adjust. You have to acclimate, and you have to really um, take a lot of pride in the culture. Otherwise, why are you living here? You submerge yourself in the culture. And uh, if you fight it, and it took me a while, Madison, it took me like 18 months yeah. of, of just not acclimating, just not adjusting. Well, you went but, from like New York, which most people in America can't live in New York. No. To like island life. I mean, that's Correct. great. It's not like you Correct. stopped over in Ohio, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Please, God forbid. <laughs> God forbid. Um, no, but like it's, you know, but the first, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm staring at my watch. I'm like, can you believe this? Can you believe this waiter didn't take my, and I'm just like, look, 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 it was broken before. Don't bring your broken mind state to a system that works for people. Recalibrate, acclimate, enjoy. And, um, you know, look, you still get the the americana quirks i still go to you know my favorite american uh expat bar here um Bo bar shout out to Bo. Bar. you know th- there's there's just such great places on the island and there's so many different people here among expats yeah that you would never be friends with anywhere anywhere back in america like if you saw and I'll send you when we're done here, I'll send you a photo of, of, of like my closest friends on the island. You'd be like, Justin, there's no fucking way this is your closest friend. We don't look anything alike. We have nothing in common other than the fact that we live here and we're, we're best buddies. That's awesome, though. Isn't that cool? That's what I used to say about comedy, too. If I'd never been into yeah. comedy, I wouldn't be yeah, friends you, with a lot of these You people. would never be friends with these people. Our lives just no. cross. Absolutely. They're some of my favorite Ab- people now. So it's like it was all meant to be, you know? When have you? When would you ever have a cigarette with Artie Lang? Never. I've never had a cigarette with Artie Lang. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, you're. you're I've never better even off. done coke with Artie Lang. In fact, I've never even done coke. Maybe I'm missing. I've it. I've done coke with Artie Lang, and I'm not even in comedy. You've never done coke with Artie Lang? No. Jesus. I've done coke once in my life, and I hated it. It made me super like awake. I go, I was just drunk, having a great time at this party, and now I'm super aware of everything. This is terrible. And then, not to mention, two days later, you want to kill yourself. I was like, why do yeah, we- oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, and not to mention, when you go to use your ATM card, you took all that money out already. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, I didn't um, buy- But you, you, well, no, you didn't. Yes, I will. We, yeah, that's right. Women don't pay for cocaine. I totally forgot. Hey, how's that? How, how are all these uh, equality rights with the door you have to open? Is it good? Are you happy with the door? You know, I want, I want a real movement where women just, you know, they open the door. No, I don't need you. Okay, I think, I think that's what it is. I think men want more. And again, I'm, I'm a Thai person now, so I don't, I don't really understand these American cultures anymore. Right. right? <laughs> but like, like, you know, I don't know. Um, well, I have heard from some, some of my guy friends, they say that'll go on, you know, Bumble or Tinder dates. And, and they're like, oh my gosh, you open the door for a girl and they get like offended. Like, are you thinking? Right, I don't know. Do what, they? Yeah, what, do they? Do they get offended? I, said, I, I thought it's when you shut the door in their face. Or I thought it's when you, your apartment and the door revolves. I, I, I told you I had a good run in New York. When, yeah, the, when the door is revolving, yes, that's it. <laughs> or when, you're, when your next date, when your next date shows up a little early and your last date didn't Yeah, <laughs> walked out yeah. you're like, oh God. Well, hopefully you didn't go down on her because then your face would smell for your second date. <laughs> well, if it were, only if it was a bad first date. What kind of comedian doesn't do cocaine? Jesus, this must have been twice as hard on you. Mm-hmm. You can get through your five minute. You can get through your five minute set in two and a half minutes. It's great. 
Yeah, right. Exactly. Well, God, yeah. I'm doing still doing five minutes. I failed, you know? Yeah, I, I'd say. Yeah. But you know what? Five minute sets are actually a lot harder than like 30 to 45 minutes or an hour sets. Because you got to get more into five minutes. You know, that's, that's a short time to get them to love you. You know, 30 minutes, you really got a time to, to, to work it and stuff. But anyways, let's get back to the expats thing so we don't get off topic. So you have <laughs> obviously made... <laughs> You have obviously made friends that are also expats. Where did they come from? Um, everywhere. So there's this huge, like, British influence on the island. Like, like English people. Okay. And they speak, another lang- they speak another language. They speak English. It's very different than New York. They have different words. And, and I've started because this is a, kind of the dominant thing that it's not a trunk. It's a boot. It's not a cash register. It's a till. It's not a line. It's um, it, well, it's um, it's a queue. I was gonna make a cocaine reference, but I forgot I was talking to her. Uh, and <laughs> and well, it's um, really better. The first time I did cocaine, I did it up. I did it with a hundred dollar bill because obviously you got to up the currency. And then my friend, my friend comes to me and goes, "Hey Madison, can I do can I do a lot of coke off your tit?" And I go, "As long as my nipples covered, go for it." <laughs> I'm like I don't give a shit. That was my first experience doing cocaine and my last, hopefully. So the first time someone was doing it off of you. See, Madison, you're the, you don't get high if you just put it on your tit. You're, you're the one that's supposed to be doing it off of someone else's tits. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know, I leave America for a year and I come back. It's in shambles. Look at this. Guys, I, I know. know how the straw goes one direction. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, okay. So you've got these, these British people, but you're friends with a lot yeah. of Indians. Uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's everyone on the island. There's Germans, there's Swedes, there's French people. They keep to themselves quite a bit. There's okay. Russians. Uh, they keep to themselves. But look, you know, um, there's great restaurants. There's um, every cuisine. The, the, the dining on the island's incredible. The bars are great. Unfortunately, like, you know, 90%, 95% of places have closed because of COVID. But the places that have survived uh, and the places that will rebuild, uh, I'm I'm really proud for it. You know, this is this is a holiday island. It's it's tough to have a work play balance here. Oh, and everybody on this island, everyone on this island's an alcoholic. <laughs> it's so, it's no it real everybody because that's what you do. Yeah, that's what you do here. You just you drink, you socialize, you talk about how much better we are than back home. That's the yeah. dream of living on an island. You complain about how good the weather is relative how how shitty the weather was back home. Yeah, it's right? like, it, in, it, in a very positive kind of rotation. So I like this, and not a lot of people have the guts to do it, is to pick up what they, and leave the known and go to the unknown and really kind of fulfill their dream. You hear people like, oh, right. your dream, leave that nine to five and go start a business or, or follow an art or something. Um, but you followed a dream of, of life. Uh, you know, look, it, nobody, nobody taught me to do this. Um, I should, maybe I should start an agency helping people. Like, let me, let me talk you off the ledge. You don't have to live. You, you said Ohio. You don't have to live in Sand. You don't have to live in Sandusky because you were born in Sandusky, asshole. Like, you don't. You have a U.S. passport. It fucking works in other places. Try something. Try something else. If it's not working, you're not happy at your job at CVS. Of course, you're not happy. <laughs> you work at fucking CBS and I come in, you got to fill my prescriptions. Not good. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and by, I do miss CBS cause you know, please. So wait, it's like, it's, it's, it's like, it's like you want a slot machine every time you put that card. Oh, it's the best. The best. Okay. Well, let's talk about medical. How are like, how's the, the, the hospitals and the doctors over there? Do you feel you're in good hands? They're, gr- they're great because there's, there's only two different words in Thai. It's good or bad. We don't have a, a, we don't have a lexicon of emotions. So it's like, how, are, how am I, doctor? Oh, you're good. Okay, I'll go home. See you next year. A- everything's inexpensive uh, unless you're in a motorbike accident and then you're fucked. Um, you know, the roads are dangerous here. Like, no, like, like medicine's very inexpensive expat insurance you know for uh you know is is very inexpensive i don't understand medicine in america it's just like when you see what fair pricing is of prescription drugs and everything's over the counter 
So like you're nervous. You ever take Xanax? You ever take Valium? You take anything? Uh, calm down. Yeah. Okay. I know you like to fly in the middle seat because you you know. Well, you I know you, you, you cheap. <laughs> right, right. No, no, no. Not because you enjoy being you know squishy. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, the other two passengers like yeah, yeah. Uh, be beside you are like yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Every everything here is is like fine. You know, you have a problem, you go to the pharmacist. Okay, take this. There's no prescriptions. There's no prescriptions. Oh, that's good. It, it's, there, there's, there's an assumption. We live in a bit of a nanny state, a nanny country. Child protect. There's no child protection laws here. There should be. There's no, there's, there, there's yeah. a self is like, like, no, like, like, like kids are riding around child protection laws. There's an eight-year-old driving a scooter <laughs> with another <laughs> eight-year-old. With a carton of eggs, like there's no protection. The eggs are in better shape. <laughs> so, no, it's true. It's true. So, you know, the the life here is look. Uh, you know, people don't wear helmets when they ride the bikes. Um, life can uh, can go by in a flash of the eye. Um, uh, in in Thailand, um, it's not. You know, but 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 I don't worry about someone stealing my cell phone off the table at Lascada at La Scala and Beverly Hills, um, you know, and someone stealing for, for, for an expensive watch at gunpoint and shooting you in the leg. Like that just happened in front of my attorney's office in Beverly Hills of Wilkshire and uh, uh, come on. Yeah. And Canyon, North Canyon that happened. You ever been to La Scala, Beverly? You can't even have lunch there. What's the, what's, there's, there's none of that. I feel safe on an island. This is a safe place. Thailand is one of the safe, because I'm sure the jails are <laughs> like the worst you've ever, you've never seen. It's, it's safe, even during desperate times where people don't have money. You know, I, I, tried to pay, I tried to pay the guy for the coconut because I can't open a yeah. coconut. Right. Yeah, I'm, fucking, I'm not fucking you know, Gilligan. I can't open a coconut. So I paid him to open a coconut. He, he wouldn't take the money. And this is a guy that could have used the money. Wow. I know. I know. There's a certain pride. It's crazy. It's, it, I, I know. I know. I know. It, it, it's nuts. Maybe it's not even pride. It's just he wanted to be nice and do something nice for you. Well, I think you have to have a certain amount of pride of, of what it is you do and loving the land. And he could have made a quick buck. You know, a little bit of money goes a long way. And they're just like, no, we're, we're, I'm grateful to have this interaction with you. Yeah. Well, th I mean, that's great. You no, know, it's, it's awesome. And it's awe-inspiring. And it's, it's a bit humbling because what makes us happy, and by us, I mean you, because, again, I'm in recovery as a New Yorker. Yeah. Um, you know, you're, 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 you're still on the Kool-Aid, but like, it's these experiences. Yeah. It's, it's just these experiences and I love Thai culture and I love the Thai people and I love, so, I, and, and, and I love a $5 massage. Yeah. You know, I'm kidding. Right. Happy endings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> please, please, please. <laughs> Wait, so um, how's the education there? If you had children, would you, you would raise them in Koh Samui? You know, <laughs> I, typically, typically, typically before Madison, ha so everybody knows, typically before Madison has a guest on, just what do you want to talk about? We didn't do any of that. Nope. And then she'll say, what, what, do you, what do you not want to talk about? I don't know. I mean, look, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I remember there was flooding on the island and uh, I, I was, I was shut building. I had this uh, kind of like uh, truck at the time and, and um, you know, big SUV and I was shuttling the kids back and forth. They couldn't get over, you know, through the water to get to school. I was a school bus driver for an afternoon, maybe an hour and a half. Okay. Really? <laughs> Look, I, 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 you know, I'm not opposed to have one of these dream killers because that's what they are. But I live in Southeast <laughs> Asia and I want to, and I, and I want to, I want to enjoy my life. And, um, you know, I, I, I think, I think it's very irresponsible to be responsible for the happiness of an offspring until you've totally figured out your life. And if you're, if you live somewhere that's not necessarily conducive of having, I mean, look, having a kid here, you'd have, you'd have 10 people in help for the price of, uh, of an LA nanny. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, like it's, it's incredible the amount of care and you'd have a bilingual child at the very least. That's true. Which I, th which I, which I at a very young age, which, which I think is cool. 
But I, I don't know. I'm just, I, I, I don't think I'm in the market for one right now. There, you ever flown with one? Yeah, I'm sorry. You ever have one on the airplane? Yes. I, I, would, I would be so embarrassed complaining to the flight attendant about the, creamy, uh, about the screaming child when that screaming child's fucking mine. Yeah, I know. And then you, you, you can't- shut up this kid? Oh, yeah. he's a little prick with a pocket square. No, I can't shut him up. Well, me, me, me neither. <laughs> so it's a, good, it's a good thing Candace doesn't listen to anything I post online. Yeah, this is true, right? That yeah. My, my, my shiksa, no. Yeah, Candace is a shiksa who is also an expat. She is from Nova Scotia, Canada. And, uh, she's wonderful. She's lived here longer than I have. She's, uh, yeah. she's lived here seven and a half years. We met here. I could see why she left Canada, though. It's cold, <laughs> way up on the, the listen, east. It's freezing. Li listen to this, Amer <laughs> you're in Colorado, okay? You, you're you're mile north, okay? It's warm. Uh, you're mile north. up in the sky. Like, honestly, listen to this imperialism. <laughs> listen to this. I understand why she left Canada. She's got fucking health care there, okay? Come on. And less school shootings. And less, like, That's but more, but uh, yeah, like, come on. No, I can see why she left Canada. And everyone's nice there, too. Everyone's so they nice are? there. But look, I, no, I know what you mean. It's, it's, we're, not, we're not a frigid people. You know, like, I, 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 went, I went to boarding school in, in, on Lake Winnipesaukee, New Hampshire, for four fucking years. I, I have no interest. You know, i rather, I rather break a schwitz than, than hypothermia. I, I, I can't yeah. do it anymore. You know, like... Like it's, it, it, it's, it's so funny, the cars on the island here, like we're used to on a, a car, right? You have temperature controls, it's digital or it's, or, it's, or it's blue and red. There's no red in the, in, in the temperature control in the cars. There. It's just blue because there's no heat in my car. There's no heat in the cars. Oh. There's no heat, they, 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 it costs nothing to put heat in a car. It's just, once you have like i remember especially since because of covid madison the next time i get off a fucking plane at jfk god forbid i have to come back and, and you know in, in january february it's going to be like the opening scene remember remember that scene in cool runnings where the dreadlocks you yeah. know the jamaican bob said sled team and the dreadlocks are frozen off and they're just yeah. <laughs> that's that's what it's like for us and you know look um uh, it's beyond me. I, I know why people don't live here to get back to the fundamental kind of questioning of, of expat immigrations, huge problem. Uh, the unknown, uh, if you don't know what you're doing, there's a lot of trial and error. The rules change all the time. Uh, there's way more unknowns than knowns. No one's going to help you through this. You need to create your own kind of support team and, um, uh, of, of people within this environment. And, um, and that, and that's what you that's what you really rely on. I mean, I'm I'm a good seven eight minutes inland from the main road. Like we're we're really in the jungle here. There's uh there's a mountain over there. Just watching. Like it's we're we're true in the jungle. Like this is not like this is we're we're, we're you you have to rely on your neighbors and and other people. Uh, the few neighbors you have to you know to kind of cohabitate and to navigate the waters of, of what it means to be an expat. And that's one of the reasons why you become friendly with people that don't look like you, that people that you would not talk to in New York City. No one you would even, if they said hello to you, uh, you know, in line at a Gristides, you would look the, like, well, first of all, why is anybody fucking saying hello to you in New York? But you know what I mean? Like you would never interact with them. You would yeah. never interact with them. And I think I'm wiser for that. I, I, I feel I'm, I'm, I'm more privileged socially for yeah. those interactions not just among thai people who, who's these interactions are really invaluable um culturally so but among like other people that you have nothing in common with other than the fact that you guys were fed up with the shit you had back home so i remember before you and i were friends i would see you in the paper and the new york post had an article you were on the front page that called you well, what, what did they call you? Which time? Was this the good article or the bad one? You were like sitting in the front of a, a cab. Oh, I was sitting on top of a cab. It was like the dip. Yeah, no, I remember. Yeah, yeah, no, it was like that, Jared. Oh, man, it was a, 
No, uh, oh yeah, the um, the ego that attacked New York City. Yeah, okay, yeah, that was it. So this experience has almost humbled you a little bit. Beyond, beyond. I haven't jumped on the hood of a taxi here in a very long time. <laughs> because there's no tourists and there's no fucking taxis anymore. No, it's, it's, it's very humbling, but I feel like that was the evolution. I feel like New York has a certain toxicity among its residents, almost like, you know, a la Kerry Bradshaw, right? We're, yeah. we're, it, it, it's an abusive relationship. We love it because it's what we know and we have so much pride, uh, but we can't wait to leave so we can come back and be miserable. And to break that vicious cycle and to reverse engineer, to have your life be vacation the entire time. And then when you have to come to New York to do other things that you need to do, you see family, you deal with banking, you, you, you know, any, any, any of this Western shit you need to do, I hope you like to fly. Yeah. You know, but I think, I think re reverse calibrating your life is pretty, uh, is, is pretty incredible. And um, I do the same shit here that you do when you're in New York, just on a different level and with a much lower stress. Stress. That's it. Like I, I just. You're, you probably, know, you're we, probably gonna live longer. No, 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 no. I drink. I drink a lot here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and but you'll have to come visit. Yes, I'm definitely gonna come visit for sure. No, so it's, it's stress. Stress fucking kills. Stress absolutely kills. But look, um, you know, it's, it's, I, I think, I think the toughest thing for COVID here, for me at least, is to try and empathize with the shit that you guys have been dealing with, because it really is not a, such an adverse effect on people in Thailand. It really hasn't. Yeah, no, I've been very lucky that I was, I was just in New York for the first five weeks and I escaped. And then I came back to New York in the middle of the summer. I was there for three weeks, escaped for another month, and then was there for a couple months and then put stuff in storage, gave up my apartment and said, I'll come back if I have to. And I'm just kind of hanging here until I figure out the next place I need to be. So it, it's, it's a good thing because I'm not tied to anything. So I can just pick up and, and go versus trying to cancel a lease and paying for a place that I'm not living in, you know, that kind of, that hassle. So, but yeah, and, and I, I do it. It's definitely a much slower pace of life, even here, which is great. You know, it's been a nice change for sure. And the, the amount of time I can spend with family, this never would, I've never would have left New York permanently ever. Like never. Uh, have you, have you, or you know, have I what? Are you, are you, are you like becoming trans? Are you, are you, are you in an intermediary stage? Listen, are you transitioning? I, I am only going back to New York for work. So if I eventually get a place there, it will be a place that I only spend five or six months max. It'll be written off a hundred percent through my LLC. Um, and I refuse to pay those New York taxes. Uh -uh, yeah. Not getting any more of my money. Bye. But. I'll still have a presence there. I just don't have to fully live there, you know? And that's what COVID taught me. And I was like, all right, this is, this is cool. So I could definitely see myself having homes, you know, hopefully fingers crossed in different places and maybe even different countries because- You can be a New Yorker without living in New York. That shit follows you everywhere. That's yeah. the point. You can still, and so look, um, you know, one of the best compliments, I, I gave a friend a compliment uh, not so long ago, and I said, I said, you scream, or what, what you were wearing, your outfit, you scream New York. You scream New York right now. Yeah. And they're like, that was, that was the greatest compliment you've ever given me. It's like, great. You can still scream New York outside of New York. In Thanks. fact, it's probably the only place you'll scream New York because you're not surrounded by other New Yorkers. That's true, right? That is true. Perspective. So I scream New York on this island, and I'm 10% of all the neurosis and all the crazy shit that I used to be back in New York. And I'm better for that, because that was 90% of the, like the worst of my qualities. Yeah. The worst. <laughs> so, you know, um, but it's, um, I think that the pandemic will, uh, has already caused an exodus, of course. I think it's going to continue on. I think all of those emails 
all of those meetings could have actually been emails and you know zoom calls replace pretty much everything and and i really i really hope it's like this i really hope because I, I think it's going to allow people to get outside of their comfort zone maybe take a gamble and by the way yeah you can say fine fuck it i'm booking a one-way ticket i'm moving somewhere i'll figure out the pieces to this puzzle as i go along if it doesn't work out you can still go back to where you left exactly with yeah. admittedly with your tail between your legs and, and and hopefully with a good story for why it didn't work out but you can fail and you should fail Absolutely. unfortunately I, I i i haven't you know but it's yeah. not an easy place you have to be able to earn an income you have to be able to uh navigate the the immigration and you got to be um you know you got to be prepared to take a few deep breaths because things don't happen as fast here as the rest of the world especially new york but it's better yeah some things are just better yeah. like like, I mean, like that view is unbelievable like Drinking out of a coconut with a straw is better. It just is. It just is. Some things are better than, than buying it for $7 at, at a Dwayne Reed. It's better. <laughs> it's better. Trust me. It came from that tree. It's better here. Oh, I love it. All right. Well, we do have to wrap up, um, but I appreciate you sharing this experience and kind of the whole expat thing. And if you guys are listening and you want to get the fuck out of wherever you're living, take the chance there's nothing keeping you in one damn place so live your guilt life. guilt and family guilt and yes everyone should, everyone should oh. break up with your family yep or, everyone's family is better better with better with facetime and you know if if you know and, and, and if you're tired of a phone call oh my god fucking storm came in the wi-fi cut, it cut out it's perfect it works every time exactly exactly all right well thank you justin and i appreciate you guys listening and we'll see you next time to find out who's next Hey, your host here, Madison Malloy. Please make sure to subscribe to the show on all podcast platforms and please rate and review us on iTunes and Spotify. Also, if you have any questions or comments, you can email us at contact at next I thank you again for listening. Bye.